In this video, I'm going to show you one of the most satisfying quantum mechanics problems I have ever done. It's not that complicated, but it is really satisfying given how much it intuitively reveals, and it is the derivation of the generalized Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Now the key about this is that it ends up showing you that the product of uncertainties can't be less than something proportional to the commutator of the operators associated with the observables whose uncertainty product you're studying. What this means is that if the variables associated with those observables commute, there is no uncertainty principle, which is really interesting. And it also says that if the corresponding operators don't commute, there is an uncertainty principle, and that it's proportional specifically to the expectation value of their commutator. Now this reproduces the famous XP Heisenberg uncertainty principle. It does not reproduce energy time uncertainty because there's no time operator. That's something you have to discuss separately. But it is consistent with every other concept of uncertainty in quantum mechanics. So it's really cool. Also, if the two observables have a set of common eigenstates, then of course the expectation value of the commutator vanishes. So it reveals to you in an intuitive way this connection between an absence of an uncertainty principle and a common set of eigenstates, a complete shared set of eigenstates. So it's a really cool thing. And because it's not that hard to derive, you can derive it by applying a few famous mathematical inequalities to a direct expression of the product of uncertainties, it ultimately is really satisfying because you get this beautiful famous result that gives you some technically sweet results so easily it, I mean, it's really just really satisfying. Anyway, here follows the math section. It is now time to begin the dramatic and stunning calculation of the generalized Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Unsurprisingly, the first step is to write out the definition of uncertainties. So we have these two relationships here, which gives the square of the uncertainties of arbitrary observables. I haven't specified what Q and R are specifically, because we want it to be a generalized uncertainty principle. But anyway, the point is these formulas give the square of the uncertainty of the observable in terms of expectation values, ultimately, of the operator that describes that observable in quantum mechanics. It turns out that it's convenient to express this outer expectation value explicitly, but it's convenient in this calculation to leave this inner one just written in terms of this angle bracket average sign. It also turns out to be convenient to rewrite this square as a sequence of factors in both cases. Next, Hermitian operators can be taken to act to the left or right without changing the value of the expression because of their Hermitian nature. If you think about what it means to be Hermitian, this is pretty obvious. But taking advantage of this, we can actually define this new notation, and then in terms of that notation, we can rewrite these uncertainty squares as these q, q, and r, r inner products. And then the product of the squares just ends up being this, obviously. Now this is an equality, and it turns out there are two inequalities we're going to use to rewrite this side of the expression in a useful way, and that will turn our equality into an inequality. And the final answer, of course, the generalized Heisenberg uncertainty principle will take the form of an inequality. The first of these inequalities that we're going to use to rewrite this side usefully is called the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, which is true for any inner product. Stated generally, it looks like this, where A and B are arbitrary vectors in the inner product space. If we apply this to our situation, this situation up here, we get this result, and we finally have an inequality instead of an exact equality. Now the second inequality that we're dealing with here that we're going to use to usefully rewrite this side of the relation is this fact that the absolute square of a complex number is greater than or equal to the square of the imaginary part. So by absolute square here, I mean the complex number times its complex conjugate. Now the specific complex number we're dealing with here is this. Now we can write out its imaginary part in a useful way. If we take this, and subtract its complex conjugate, then we get 2i times the imaginary part. And so we can just divide that out to get the imaginary part. And so we arrive at this here. So now if we take the square of this, we know that that will always be less than 
or equal to the absolute square of the number we started with, this one. So it's consistent with the inequality relation we already have to write this inequality relation. Now what we can do is we can insert the definition of these q and r states back in and start simplifying. So first, if we substitute this in, we get this. Then if we remember that operators don't commute, we can expand it out successfully like this. And then we can distribute in these bra and ket vectors, and we ultimately arrive here. Then we find that we get expectation values showing up, and we also find that because these states are normalized, we get factors of 1 showing up in a few places. So if we insert those facts in, we arrive here. Then we can cancel terms that are the same but with opposite signs. And because these expectation values are just numbers, they do commute, even though the operators don't. Doing that simplifies it down to here. And then we can undistribute the bra and ket vectors to get this. Then we recognize the commutator. And we realize this is just the expectation value of the commutator of these two operators. And then finally, because the calculation is done, we can use the short form notation for the expectation value. Then we can take the square root to arrive at this result. And that is how you derive the absolutely beautiful generalized Heisenberg uncertainty relation. Now you have seen the awesomeness of not just the generalized Heisenberg uncertainty principle, but the epicness of how easy and straightforward and satisfying it is to derive. You've seen how some rather simple and elegant mathematics produces this stunning result. I hope this video helped you understand quantum mechanics better. I hope it helped you love quantum mechanics more. If it did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Dietrich out.